Hey guys, today we're looking at a Luigi vs. Nolimar clip submitted by um, Thomas446. Uh, the little form he filled out beforehand says, What are your weaknesses? Adaptation. What questions do you have? Do you want to be addressed? How to adapt to my opponent? Should I discuss how the matchup ended up working? Yes. Uh, this matchup's like uh, really weird for Luigi because you do a really good job of when you're like right in someone's face and all of Alomar's game is avoiding situations like that. Um... And remember, uh, if you're holding shield, none of the pigmen will grab onto you, or like the purple one, purple one won't like knock you back. Um, but don't be in shield too too much because then he'll start grabbing you. Um, coming in from above at like the right times is going to be the best way, or using NATO because that's really like like max speed you can go in the burst when you change from like going so slow as Luigi into NATO. Uh, you might be able to surprise him and get like the advantage and getting him on platforms and stuff pressuring him. Could be really good too. And remember, all the pigmen, all oh, when they're like in the air, thrown or uh, used as like attacks or projectiles, so you can clank with them, and then like they can't hurt you anymore until like they're called like back or they're done basically. Uh, said I played on Anther's ladder at Silver One. I always do my planning before a match. I did a lot of pivot up smashes in the game because Luigi's invincible head beats out pigmen throw. It smash attacks if it's spaced properly. The problem comes when I overdo that strategy and I get red. After the first 30 seconds of the match, I felt like I was playing poorly, and the only reason the game stayed close is my two down smash punishes on a roll read in the second game all right we're only looking at the first game so anyway let's watch I'm sorry this not a lot of sound hold on i just want to all right yeah be careful about not being in shield and also these jab situations you should just wait in shield i think all the jabs there are good i don't like the back air in this situation it's like right here like, yeah, if he jumps over the ledge, but you did it, like, way too early. Like, when you were at this apex height, there was no way your back air was going to hit him. And you end up getting punished for it, too. I like the falling nair, but realize if you fall into someone's shield with nair, then they're most likely expecting nair every time you're on top of them. So be cautious. And just, like, fall down and grab them or something. Or jump away if you're, like, stuck in free fall. Ooh, I would have liked to grab there. I wish you would have put on pressure from under the platform instead of in front of him, because now this situation is allowed where... Instead of him running this way and then you can chase him under the platform, he gets the free, like, get out of the situation uh, from just dropping from the platform or, like, shield dropping. That was a really good back air. A uh, good up smash, but remember, like, the more you use it, like, it's going to be good. It's going to add on damage, but it's one of your kill options gone away. And it's, like, your, like, most consistent kill option because it's a really good move. Your head being invincible, it's really hard for you to get punished um, if players aren't ready. Uh, so using it here, especially on Battlefield, where we're going to have the biggest blast zones in the game, you want to use it, like, sparingly. I don't like you falling on the platforms. Uh, get down on the ground and challenge him, because he can't really do much under you. I mean, when he's on top of you and you're under him. I misspoke, I'm sorry. Uh, fireballs are also really good in this matchup, because they just clank with the pigmen. So, especially when you have a lead, it's not something... Um you should be afraid to do, because you're never really losing when the fireballs clank. You're, like, even, and you're ahead, so you're still ahead after that. But, like, this entire situation, you, like, jumped up, like, for a little bit. Like, right here. And you didn't even throw out an attack. Like, I don't, I don't know what your plan was here, but you've turned a situation where you were probably, like, 65, like, 70% uh, in your favor for, like, the situation to work out for you. And you've completely turned it around, and now you're in the disadvantageous position. Um, so be careful if you're not going to throw out hitboxes about, like, positioning yourself to ready when they hit the ground. Because I think he might have air dodged into the ground. Again, it's a good up smash, but it's going to be really hard for you to kill with it now. Please do not. Ooh. He covered your get up, though. Um. I would like for you to not worry so much about the pigmen there. Yeah, it's going to start to attack on damage. But if you, like, look at this situation, so he's throwing pigmen. You know these are coming. Like, the fireballs really aren't going to deter. Like, I know I think you're trying to hit the pigmen, but I'd rather you just hold shield because now you have a pigmen on you. It's actually, okay, this is, like, the worst one, so I can maybe get it. But I would rather have you thrown out the hitboxes where he was going to be. So now at this point, you know he's going high. You should be able to, you shouldn't have committed with that forward air, and you should be able to actually hit him up here with an up air or forward air. Glad you pressured there. Uh, again, a useless fireball. Fireball there could have been really good. That's not going to work. Ooh, nice down smash read, though. Get my cursor out of the way. Remember, he's got invincibility. Don't try to pressure too hard. Now you're, like, putting yourself just in bad situations 
when you see I really don't like this tornado, um, there was no need for it. What happened is he read your get up right here by having a long lasting hitbox there. Because yeah, you have one frame of um, vulnerability before you can like pull up shield. Uh, and like his down tilt covered it the same way. And after I would have gotten hit by the down tilt, I probably would have jump air dodged. Because again, that also has a one frame or wait on the ledge. Um, but like you could get seriously hurt here from using that NATO. And ooh. Alright, so your 0% punish is actually um, up smash uh, on like almost everyone. Because it can lead into regrab or more arrows. Because yeah, you're going to get this double fair. Um, and that ended up working out, but had he DI'd out, you wouldn't have been able to get anything else. Uh, and you can't bet on someone doing this like bad DI. Um, I would have liked, now that your um, combo like string after your throw has worked out, I would have liked after you did the up tilt to hold shield. So when he came down with the hitbox, which is most likely what was going to happen, because he wants to like, he wants to break your combo up so he's not being pressured. Uh, you can shield that, then like re grab him and continue the combo. We'll be careful. Yeah, be careful about your standard get up and also trying to shield grab Olimar. It's going to be really hard. He's most likely not going to be in your face. Also, be really careful about just throwing out hitboxes as Luigi. Like, it works in some matchups, but where you're fighting him, where he can, like, kind of weave in between with his Pikmin, and, like, he's not the one getting hurt by the aerials. It's just his Pikmin. Um... And, like, he can start using that to his advantage and reading you. And you're thinking, oh, I'm just going to keep hitting Pigman. And then he comes in at the right moment. Uh, so be careful. And that grab, I mean, the jab. Like, don't go through a full jab on a Pigman. There's no point. You might just get punished. Ooh, unfortunate no punish there. Good down air. Oh, but now you're getting, like, you're starting to do the thing. When I talk about this in a couple videos. Where you're playing to where your opponent is, not to where they're going to be. And it's so bad against Olimar because he's never really standing still. He really likes to run and then like side B back towards you or run, pivot F smash, um, pivot up smash and stuff. Not so much up smash, but it's just, like it can't happen. But big big situations are the turnaround like side B uh, or side B in your direction and the pivot F smash. So when you do that and you commit to where you think he is and not where he's going to be, you're going to get punished really hard and it can result in your death away. Hold on, how did you get edge guarded here? Okay, I don't know why you jumped here. So what happens here? Alright, you're at this length. You don't need to side B. Uh, if you side B, it could result in your death, depending on what pigment he's got up. And he has purple up, so he would kill you. Um, he jumps out here. In this situation, the only attack he can now hit you with is down air. So it, and, like, right here. There's no no reason to jump here. Like, I would go lower and then jump down B or jump up B if you, like, get close enough to the ledge around here. Which I don't know if you would in this situation. I don't think you would. I think you would have to NATO. Um, but you use your jump in, like, the really predictable spot when going low, so... Oh, I wish you would have went back down to the gr ground and jabbed him. Uh, that was, like, way too committal of a jab, though. Okay, so you're starting to have the problem where you're trying to move with air or Luigi's air mobility, and it's really bad, and it's going to get you hit with a lot of pigment if you aren't, like, fairing them every time. Uh, and the best way to, like, get around the situation is just run and, like, stop with shield. Uh, because then pigment won't hit you, they don't latch onto you, unless he uses, like, a grab. Uh, which he really hasn't been shown to use so far. That was a good NATO. I wish you would have stayed on top of him more, though. That was a really good Tomahawk, and I hope you can get a decent follow-up. Mm. Oh, if you would have grabbed, I think you could have got that. I think you acted just a little too late in general. I don't like that NATO. You didn't get anywhere close to him. You should eat a punish. Oh, okay. So he didn't have pigment. If, if you knew that he wasn't going to have pigment because you were going to NATO them, and that he couldn't punish you, literally, even though he could have used, like, uh... Nair, or like up tilt there, I think could have hit the platform too. Then good on you, but I'm assuming that that wasn't the case. And if that wasn't the case, be very careful about opening yourself up with tornado because like smash attacks, grabs, all that stuff is like a really, really like big deal. Again, you're playing to where he is, not to where he's going to be. Uh, I would never approach him with just straight up up smash, always pivot, but I think you know that. Mm. I like that NATO. Uh, something to note too, you're going to go into hit lag every time you're hitting the pigment with your move, so it's going to be harder to catch him, because he's going to have a lot of time to react and move, so be careful if you're not starting NATO close enough to him. I like the fall with the Nair. Um, 
I would like you to sit in shield with the Nair there, because if he overextends with a fair, you can, um, out of shield up B him. Uh, you can, like, jump up B. Oh, uh, you don't even have to, like, shield drop and then up B. And your aero versions are not any weaker, so, um, and you can always do it in your, like, jump squad, too. I think you can cancel it out in your jump squad. Um, but yeah, holding shield right there, because he's shown that he likes to jump over the ledge with fair. Um, also, your fireballs are getting a little predictable, so be careful. If you really don't feel comfortable approaching him on the ground, in which I think you should be fine if you're doing running shield and you're not getting grabbed, if you start getting grabbed in that situation, obviously you're going to want to approach in the air. Um, but use the platforms if you need to. Um, as long as you can weave around his attacks, being on the platforms isn't too much of a problem. I would like if you didn't like go all the way down to where you, it's like the perfect jump up B height. Uh, because you've given him a lot of control if he needs to pull more Pikmin, he could. If he wanted to set out for a situation to punish you, he could. Luckily, he hasn't. Also, he hasn't been throwing out a lot of grabs. Uh, so I definitely, like, would employ the running shield strategy. And he also likes to roll a lot on the ground. Um, which, luckily, you read with the down smash. But unfortunately, we're on Battlefield, so it's not going to kill. Ooh, ooh, nice. You tried to read it again, but he was... He, like, you haven't approached him and, like, done a lot. Except for, like, the two up smashes you hit at, like, the start of the game. So, uh, he was comfortable sitting there, so you have to mix up your plan, because he realized he was rolling too much, but now he knows you're not getting in. If he had hold, held one of those, um, purple pigmen, you would have been dead. Okay, so, uh, this, you probably could die. Wow, you actually won. Um, we're gonna treat this like you lost, because... So, what should have happened here is you should have immediately side beat with a very weak one. Olimar is one of those characters who... Um, I wouldn't have been surprised if he actually threw two Pikmin off first, um, and then came out out at you, because he could go really low, fare you really easily, like it's a dish one, he's not gonna get hit by, um, he shouldn't, if he has any decent spacing, get hit by your side B, um, so going low like this means you're going to get hit with a fare, which did happen, and he's also a character, if he doesn't fast fall this, he will make it back, like he can come hit you down here and make it back, um, so I would have liked uh, a really fast side B, like an uncharged one, and then like air dodge, air dodge, and then like jump cyclone high if you need to. Um, obviously, it could have put you in the situation to still get killed. Um, but this one, the second you started charging your side B all the way, you kind of like sealed your fate. Luckily, you won, but that's kind of besides the point. I will leave it like this. Anyway, though, um, as I was saying, um, adaptation, it's not something I can really just give you. Um, one or two big tips for uh it's something you just have to learn yourself uh, it's kind of got to get beat into you by your opponents or yourself if you keep losing uh, because of not adapting uh, something i recommend is going watch your like past clips uh if you have any and seeing like why you why you get hit like started into combos why you whiff stuff um why you lose stocks why you lose games why you in overall lose the set if you don't have clips, watch pro sets, see why people start getting into combos, why they uh, lose their stocks, why they lose the games. Um, and start to try to notice, like, throughout the game without, like, pausing and thinking. Like, huh, like, so far he's been trying this and it hasn't worked. Um, and once you can kind of get that into your head, uh, you can try to work it into a match. Try to work it into friendlies if it's too hard during tournament sets. I understand tournament nerves are a thing, and it's not easy to just simply adjust because you're really nervous, you want to win, you don't really want to overextend or anything, but um, that's some ways to try it. Um, and don't focus too much on things like planning before a match. Obviously, like if you know someone you're playing against, you know their habits, you can like keep them in mind, or you know against uh, like a certain character, you need to do specific things, or, like something you need to be aware of, like Corrin's counter or like um, Bayonetta's witch time. Like that's good, but don't focus on it so much because like. You focused a lot on those up smashes like really early and then you completely forgot about them and that can happen um and you just need to kind of have like a flow for like the entire match so you can use all of your tools um but yeah that's it uh luckily you won the game but uh you're not gonna be so lucky every time anyway i hope you guys enjoyed like favorite subscribe whatever uh you know the good stuff and i'll see you guys in the next video